Well, we are seeing John's Park film and we'll have lots of stories. But in fact, the story starts from where we are, which is in the old priory of St. John the Evangelist. So the original John name goes back to the earliest, one of the earliest parts of Waterford City's history. And we are standing in that location. We are standing, as I said, in a priory of St. John the Evangelist, which was established in or about 1185 and it was established by um, King John. Well, he was Prince John when he came in 1185. He returned later in 1210 as, um, as a full king, uh, um, sort of whatever. Now, that was only 14, and when it was established, 1185, when the John's name that eventually reached John's Park uh, started here. Um, and when his father came only 14 years previously in, um, a, in 1171, hot on the heels of you know, Strongbow, um, uh, he came on the strength of Adrian the Fourth, bull out the giving him um, uh, rights over uh, the start of Ireland, which is not often f fully appreciated. So when his son came, now uh, Richard the First, uh, who preceded him wasn't that much interested. But, but when the um, Prince John came here, he was um, rather keen, um, one, to appease the Pope, because the Pope had kind of blocked his appointment as the King of Ireland, and he had to, uh, his father had to backtrack from that. So when he was here, he was rather keen to get involved in good works. He also had a reputation as a very good administrator, but rather mixed CV. But so he established two important things here in Waterford on this very site. The Priory itself, a Benedictine Priory here in 1185, as well as the Leper Hospital or Laser Hospital, uh, which was up in Stephen Street, on which a lot of uh, reclamation, renovation work has been done recently. Um, so the it was the Benedictine Order, a sister house of the House of uh, Bath, of the Benedictines in um, Bath here. Um, so when the Priory was founded, along with it were other lands uh, which would have been used to fund um, the um, Priory here going from Ballytruckel to Kilcop to Creighton and all of these lands were sort of linked in. So the Priory here grew with the new Norman town, the extension of the old Viking town that the Anglo-Norman town that developed around the same period. So the area prospered. So the Priory lasted here, thrived, blossomed, prospered um, for 350 years until it was suppressed by Henry VIII, uh, circa 1536. Um, so on its um, suppression, uh, of course, there was a church and the, and the church, the remains of which, which are uh, sort of here, here behind me, um, and continue to serve the, the people of the area here beyond the, the um, sort of suppression. But on the suppression, the lands here were granted to William Wise. Now, the Wises themselves were Anglo-Normans and came over on the boat with Strongbow, Strongbow uh, sort of et al. But the Wises remained a strong, powerful Catholic family from the earliest times uh, right down to sort of modern times. Even picked up a connection with the Bonaparte's own route. Um, so William Wise and then uh, later his son Thomas Wise became very dominant landowners, property owners in sort of, you know, this area. And um, the, the priory here, its lands extended, its immediate lands, uh, apart from its outland, extended way back where Rice Park is, where Bunkers Hill is, uh, right back in uh, sort of across to where um, the Good Shepherds is. So extended way back and sort of further in the field. So a lot of the place names in this immediate area stemmed from John. 
I'm looking in front of me there, St John's Lane, which ran down the side of the Priory, popularly known to generations of Waterford people now as the Back Lane. But this is where the story begins. You have John's Avenue. And from here, you extended in John Street, you extended into Johnstown. To access that was John's Bridge. Now, the current John's Bridge is there since 1765, but in fact, it was a medieval crossing point at that point. That was St. John's Gate, uh, all flowing from the bridge in St. John. So you go down uh, sort of Johnstown, up um, John's Hill. You, the wises in good time, having acquired the, uh, the property here, built a manor house. And that, roughly where Rice Park is now, um, by the Michael Walden Institute there at the bottom of Manor Hill, they established Manor St John. So thus you had the name Manor Street evolving from that. Um, you had, in time jumping slightly ahead, you had St. John's College, which was founded in the early um, 19th century uh, at the, uh, on College Street, and thus its name, nothing to do with the college at the other side of the uh, thing. And they, in goodly time, moved to the leafy suburbs up John's Hill in about uh, 18, 1868. We go back down to Johnstown, and we pass uh, John, what is now Johnstown Industrial Estate, as again, uh, generations of water people who know is where the first uh, glass factory comes. So you add another John. Uh, John's Hill popularly was known. John's, that was the main egress out of the medieval city. Uh, from here, across John's Bridge, down Johnstown, up John's Hill, and that was the way to the passage. King John and Henry before him would have come in this way uh, into the uh, early city of Waterford. So the manor say, where we are also standing here is now in the modern era and for about 200 years uh, had been a Quaker cemetery. There were two Quaker cemeteries. They first established a cemetery on this ground where we stand as early as 1696. Uh, 1689, in fact, their meeting house came in um, 1696. So they have, uh, have been here um, for a very long time. Um, the the uh, Quakers seem to have tracked sort of the wises. The Quakers famously acquired the wise house uh, of um, Newtown in, in um, 1798. So the, the many Johns, as I was saying, uh, Johns Hill, uh, popularly at the time, uh, and featured in the famous Van Hagen painting of Waterford, was known as Windmill Hill. So there was a lot of development uh, up uh, Johns Hill. Uh, for example, following the movement of the college, the, um, the laser hospital or the leper hospital of Stephen Street had seen better days and it, in 1796, moved to John's Hill. Leafier suburb, healthier, healthier place for patients and uh, sort of that trend, sort of that trend, uh, sort, of con uh, sort of continued. Uh, so, so the, uh, so the John's, uh, oh yes, just pure trivia and pure one of these tidbits of trivia and whatever, mentioning mention of the important role of Waterford uh, Crystal and the Penroses of Quakers, of course, and some of them buried here. Um, the the Penroses were uh, business people, and they brought in from the area of England they came from a glassmaker, and his name, just a pure coincidence, was John Hill. And he, in fact, uh, brought the glassmaking skills um, uh, into Waterford and taught the local people here the art of glassmaking. And it was he perfected the first crystal glass. And the quality that made Waterford Crystal unique started with a guy called John Hill that the Penrose had brought in. And again, there's another kind of connection with John's Park. There's the German road in the latter 
further reincarnation of Waterford Crystal uh, with the German Havel Batchy kind of uh, link and the craftsmen that sort of grew up there. So, so the whole story, to wind it back, uh, began here with Prince John, Earl of Morton, would be King of Ireland, uh, sort of arrived here in 1185, and the abbey was founded and endowed here, and then, as we said, endowing the name of John to so many parts of Waterford. And another interesting side shoot of, it gave us the name Manor St. John. Manor St. John, as I indicated earlier, that that original house finally f fell into ruin in the early 19th century. By 1830, it was demolished. Now, Sir Thomas Wise, who was a great uh, parliamentarian, great advocate of uh, education, uh, did so much work in the century. He, he built uh, the new Manor St. John out in Liz Duggan uh, in uh, 1842. And the famous architect uh, Pugin, who designed the interior of um, Westminster Abbey, had a connection with some work at the Presentation Convent. Uh, he uh, designed and had the wise house of Manor St. John in this Duggan. Now, what is interesting about the both houses, the, the Quakers uh, who had the meeting house here that I allude to, that they opened in 1896, the, they moved from that meeting house uh, uh, in about uh, 1792, 92, and went to O'Connell Street, which we spoke about um, b before, because the center of commerce had shifted over there from this area here. Now, shortly afterwards, the, the, the parish uh, of St. John, which had continued being created by the creation of this priory here, and as I said, where the name came from, uh, they went through a penal times and subsequently they went through lean times and after the eventual decay uh, and ruin of the church behind us uh, of the original St. John, uh, they were pretty much um, sort of homeless. And they acquired the use of the Quaker meeting house in 1800 and worked from there um, for the next 50 years until the parish church just across the street of St. John. Now you had St. John's parish within the walls, which was here, and without the walls, then which it was Johnstown onwards uh, with parish without. And then as we mentioned, that that last very long time until the parish was divided in, in um, 1970, in 1974, uh, sort of in um, modern times. So the Quaker meeting house became the parish church, temporary parish church, uh, and then in 1850, the parish of St. John. So the parish of St. John flowed from here, from this location, Prince John, St. John the Evangelist Priory, and then uh, all the other Johns and everything else flowed from there. And it's worth noting as well and worth recalling that the, uh, the Quaker meeting house uh, that was vacated, that was on Bowling Green, that was vacated in about 1792. By 1800, um, uh, uh, that uh, was taken over by the parish of um, St. John, uh, which, with, uh, which the with the decay, with the, ru the ruin of the old church of the sort of the priory, uh, so they established their church there uh, until for the next 50 years, uh, while they were building their new parish church, the one we St. John's Parish Church um, today uh, in Parnell Street um, uh, of uh, 18 of 1850. Uh, now. That original Quaker meeting house 
uh, parish church uh, sort of continued to have uh, a a community-based use. In, in time, it became uh, a, a CBS monastery school. It had other educational, valuable educational uses after that time, uh, sort of back in the uh, back in the 80s. It is now the same property as the Eben Rice sort of community social youth outreach thing. So that same location has continued to be relevant, so that's the part of the Manners in John sort of project. But a sister project uh, of the Manor Street, which stems from Manor St. John, is the house that was built uh, by um, Sir Thomas Wise in 1842. Uh, now, that uh, in time, the Wises had moved on from that. The last occupant, actually, of that was the Mrs. Crosby, who was, uh, who was a Malcolmson, was the last person who lived there, and very much became associated with Lestogan and became a, a community facility there. And there's now a thriving, very valuable in the parish of St. Uh, Paul's outside, uh, the, known as the, um, the Manor St. John Project which is a sister operation or a brother operation, fraternal uh, operation uh, uh, of the Manistry project, uh, which was the old Quaker meeting house here. And that is thriving and doing invaluable work. So the name John has lived on serving the community in the, in, in the Edmund Rice Centre alongside of us here and uh, out uh, in sort of sort of list Dogan, where it has uh, continued to provide invaluable service. So a story beginning back in 1185, the name John, uh, apart from the celebration, along with the celebration of all the other John, uh, John's Park, which we're celebrating, the story of John's Park, which we're celebrating through uh, sort of the film here today, uh, uh, sort of sort of lives on. Uh, one further thing is where John's Park is built, uh, is that is in Lord Grange. And the Lord Grange, as in Upper Grange, and overlooking up on top of John's Hill, you have a, a, a new housing estate called Catherine's Grange, which is well named, because that's where the original Grange was in Waterford. Grange itself uh, is an Anglo-French word meaning granary, uh, farmhouse, and that farmhouse was very much linked, which was developed around the same time, the priory, the Augustinian priory uh, of St. Catherine, and Catherine Street, where the courthouse, St. Catherine's Hall is, uh, all of that kind of stuff. So that was the original Grange. Archaeologist Simon Dowling pointed me sort of in that direction of that's where were Grange, as was the, there was a, the farm here, which in turn supported um, St. Arthur's Hospital and was known as the hospital or the mental hospital farm. So, um, so that was the origin of the Grange here. And I discovered again, um, courtesy of Simon Dowling, that an even older name for that Grange area was Innes Brick. Now, that was in his brick, at the brick as in the Dacia tribe brick, who established themselves and after whom Bally Britain is named. So this early Dacia people uh, not only settled in uh, Bally Britain, and which goes back into the dawn of time, well before uh, the arrival of the Normans, well before the Vikings. So the um, bricks were in occupation, it would seem from the name, uh, sort of back in what became Grange, Upper Grange, Lower Grange, Grange Park, and all these uh, Grange places here. And it was on Lower Grange lands that indeed John's Park was eventually uh, built. So the lands there go back, way, way back in history, which is another angle. So uh, the area is steeped in history. A great name, historic name, uh, both historic and a hallowed name, you could say, with, uh, with uh, many heroes and many stories. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh yeah, I live here. Stay. Uh, it's worth saying, the, yeah, I'm glad you said that. It's worth saying that obvious thing. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, sorry, was it just named just for... Well, yeah. Well, the uh, naming of John's Park in the, in the mid-50s when the, uh, when, when this very significant, this major suburban uh, development uh, was planned, is that it was kind of a, a natural extension from here. There was a natural physical linear sort of progression uh, from John Street, Johnstown, John's Hill, Bally Truckle, which was part of the lands of the Priory here, which you go through on the way to um, John's Park. Uh, and it seemed uh, n uh, a kind of a natural order of things uh, because it was now on the uh, part of St. John's Parish and that um, it, 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 it seemed uh, tying it in with the long continuous Waterford Association, especially this part of Waterford, because there's a direct lineage that said this was the main route out of Waterford, uh, out of Waterford City, out of the Walled City, um, the tr um, through St John's Gate, over the bridge, Johnstown, uh, leading. So in a sense, it was kind of an obvious name to go from and a name that has been steeped in a sort of history.